so he, he's being a little conservative to that side until he slows him down a little bit. Well, there's a left hand and that it's time for part two in our series about legendary boxer Tommy the Duke Morrison. Tommy had an amazing knockout power. In our first video, we showed you 22 brutal knockouts. If you haven't seen it, the link is in the description below. Tommy's powerful left hook scored him knockout after knockout. His speed, aggression, and killer instinct made him invincible. Now, let's get started. After defeating Ladislao Mihangos in June of 1991, Tommy's next fight was in October against Ray Mercer for the WBO heavyweight belt. It was in this fight that Tommy Morrison lost for the first time in his career, being defeated in the fifth round by TKO. Mercer was the same boxer who defeated Tommy in a qualifying bout for the 1988 Olympics. Morrison later said that he knew his carefree approach to training would someday overtake him, and it did. The Duke bounced back from the loss and returned to the ring four months later to fight Bobby Quarry. At the end of the first round, there was a powerful attack from Tommy, but the bell saved Quarry. At the beginning of the second round, there was a mutual shootout where Morrison was more productive, but Bobby also scored some hits. It all ended in the second minute when Morrison's accurate right cross landed on Quarry's jaw. Tommy's next opponent was an experienced boxer, Jerry Halstead, nicknamed Wimpy. As always, Morrison led the fight and was more productive. Halstead clinched a lot and used questionable tactics, which was often reflected in the roar of the crowd. Jerry was even deducted a point in the third round for blows to the back of the head. At the beginning of the fifth round, with a powerful combination of a right cross and a left uppercut, the Duke knocked Halstead down. He did not have time to fully recover after the count, and the referee stopped the fight. After that, Jerry Halstead alternated victories with defeats and hung up his gloves with an impressive record of 85, 19, and 1. A month later, the Duke Morrison returned to the ring again to fight Kimmel Knockout Odom. Odom started his career off with a good knockout streak, but had not won in his last six fights. At the end of the second round, Tommy knocked down Odom with a powerful left hook. Odom was only saved from a knockout by the bell. In the first minute of the third round, Kimmel was again on the ground from the same type of blow. The Duke pinned Odom in a corner and dealt numerous blows. And after a hard right cross, the referee stopped the fight. In May 1992, Tommy entered the ring against the tall Art Tucker, who had begun training for boxing while in prison. After his release, he began his professional career and initially won on a streak of 16 wins in a row. He was considered a promising heavyweight, but then he suffered several defeats. Tucker worked well on the counter and even hit a few times. Morrison boxed more actively and hit harder. At the end of the first round, he shook Art a bit with his signature left hook. In the first minute of the second round, Tommy knocked Tucker down with the same blow and immediately knocked out with a third left hook. Art Tucker only had two more fights, one of which he won, and ended his career. Morrison's next opponent was Joe the Boss Hip. He was the first Native American to achieve an excellent record in the pro heavyweights at 24-2. The fight was mostly dictated by Morrison, but there were rounds where Hip showed his skills. Of course, facing a right-hander is nothing new. And here's a good combination. Must have 
questions about Tommy Morrison's oh, another, another left hand by him. And he was In the fifth round, the boss first missed an incoming powerful uppercut, and then a right hook knocked him down. Despite this knockdown, the fight was close, and the initiative passed from one fighter to another. But in the ninth round, the Duke caught hip with an uppercut to the jaw, which shook him hard. Morrison quickly got his bearings and finished off the boss with a series of lightning fast hooks. This was not an easy fight for Tommy, and Joe Hip proved to be a worthy opponent. In 1999, Joe Hip became the WBF heavyweight champion of the world and retired with a record of 43 and 2. In January 1993, the Duke fought Carl The Truth Williams. Williams had fought twice for world heavyweight titles, first for the IBF title against Larry Holmes in 1985, and then for the undisputed title against Mike Tyson in 1989. But he lost both fights. In the first minute of the first round, Williams missed a tight left hook to the head and was on the ground. At the end of the second round, Morrison again knocked down his opponent with his signature left hook. However, in the fifth round, the Duke found himself on the floor of the ring after a hard right cross by Williams, and immediately again after a heavy uppercut from Carl. Morrison quickly recovered, and at the end of the ninth round, the fight had once again switched in his favor. The referee stopped the fight due to Williams' inability to continue. In March of the same year, Tommy again entered the ring against puncher Dan Murphy who had a record of 39-9 and nine with 25 wins by knockout. In the second round, Murphy was twice knocked down, first from a right hook and then from a left. And at the beginning of the third round, the Duke again dropped Murphy with a combination of hooks and an uppercut. Murphy didn't get up. On June 7, 1993, Tommy Morrison became the WBO heavyweight champion by unanimous decision over legendary veteran George Foreman. Foreman's defeat and Morrison's sudden appearance on the heavyweight champion list drew a lot of attention. A couple of months later, in August of 1993, Morrison held his first defense of the WBO title. The contender for the title was Tim Tomasek, nicknamed Donut, who was on a series of eight victories in a row. In the fourth round, the Duke took down Tomasek with a powerful series of hooks. Tommy retained his title, and after the fight, Tomasek went on to win 19 out of his next 20 battles. Unfortunately, Morrison's second defense of the WBO title was unsuccessful. Fighting heavyweight Michael Bent, he lost by TKO, 1 minute and 33 seconds into the first round, losing the WBO belt. Tommy Morrison's next opponent was Tui Toya, nicknamed the Smoking Samoan, whose strength was in his single powerful blows. The Duke was constantly pushing and working combinations, and at the end of the second round, Toya missed a heavy pair of hooks and was knocked down. In the third round, Morrison began to attack more actively and throw more punches. 
Tommy landed again with a hard right cross and a left hook combination that left Toya on the floor once again. A heavy uppercut and a finishing cross were the last in this confrontation. Morrison added another knockout to his stance. And the smoking Samoan began to lose a lot after that and ended his career with a record of 14 and 14. In March 1994, Tommy the Duke returned to the ring to face off against the undefeated Brian Scott. Scott had won victories over all of his 14 opponents and wasn't about to break his winning streak. In the first round, he tried to keep Morrison at bay with his long reach. In the second minute of the second round, the fighters entered into an exchange of blows with both hitting well. But then, a powerful right uppercut paired with a left hook brought Scott to his knees. And during the referee count, Brian's corner threw in the towel. A year later, Morrison met in the ring with a seven-foot puncher named Marcel Brown. Brown started his professional career with 11 knockouts in a row, but then he began to alternate defeats and victories. Brown tried to keep Tommy at bay with his long jabs. The Duke constantly tried to close the distance, but Marcel clinched. At the beginning of the third round, Tommy knocked down his opponent with a left hook. Brown continued to fight and put up a competent defense that helped him hold out a little longer. In the final minute of the third round, with his signature left hook, the Duke knocked out Marcel Brown. Tommy's next opponent was Terry Anderson, who had successfully started his career with 15 wins in a row, but won only once in his last seven fights. The fight took place at close range, and both fighters threw a lot of punches. In the third round, Morrison delivered a powerful attack with a series of hooks and knocked Anderson to the ground. In the seventh round, a hard left hook to the liver was the winner for Tommy. Terry Anderson could not recover for a very long time. He fought only once more, where he again lost by knockout and hung up his gloves. A little more than a month later, the Duke Morrison entered a title fight against Canadian boxer Donovan Razor Ruddock. The vacant IBC heavyweight belt was on the line. In the first round, Ruddock knocked down Tommy with a tight right uppercut, but couldn't finish him off. In the second round, now, Donovan missed an incoming hard uppercut to the jaw. His legs gave out and he grabbed the ropes to keep from falling. But the referee counted the knockdown. In the sixth round, Razor hooked Tommy with a left and hurried to finish him off, but ran into a countering left hook from Morrison that knocked him down. Donovan continued, but after not answering a series of punches from Morrison, the referee again countered a standing knockdown. The Duke continued to press his advantage, and after several tight hits, the referee stopped the fight. Ruddock resented the early stoppage, but Morrison became the IBC heavyweight champion. Tommy would go on to lose this title in his next fight against Britain, Lennox Lewis, who at the time was the best in the heavyweight division. A terrific performance by Lennox Lewis. 
In November 1996, Tommy Morrison returned to the ring to fight Marcus Rode. Marcus had a good 15-1 record, and all his wins came by knockout. Like most of Tommy's fights, the fight ended ahead of schedule. In the first minute, Rode was knocked down after missing a tight right cross. Immediately, another right cross, coupled with a left hook from Morrison, sent Marcus to the floor again. It all ended when Rode fell for the third time after a hard, powerful cross. Marcus Rode's record stands at 90 fights, but with only 35 wins. Regrettably, before the next fight, the Nevada Athletic Commission determined that Tommy Morrison tested positive for HIV. He was suspended from boxing and stated he would never fight again. Ten years later, the Duke changed his mind and denied that those tests were even true. In 2007, he passed several tests that came back negative, and that same year, he renewed his boxing license. Morrison returned to the ring and fought two more six-round fights. His first return fight was in the USA in 2007 against John Castle. Morrison won by TKO in the second round. His second return fight was on February 9, 2008, when he entered the ring against undefeated young boxer Matt Weishar. Of course, Morrison's age was noticeable during this fight. His decade-long absence had an undeniable impact on his speed and strength. He had slowed down and no longer had the same power in his signature left hook. But still, the Duke pressed forward. He hit well several times and defended successfully. Beginning in the first seconds of the third round, Tommy accurately landed blows. And in the second minute, after a couple of hard right crosses, he shook Weishar and the referee stopped the fight. This was the last fight of the very talented puncher Tommy the Duke Morrison. He hung up his gloves with an incredible record of 48-3-1, where he scored 42 knockout wins. He forever left behind the legacy of his spectacular fights and powerful knockouts. His career and life story continue to attract fans to this day. If you enjoyed this video series on Tommy Morrison, please click the like, leave us a comment, and hit the bell to turn on notifications so you won't miss our next videos. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so right now. See you next time in the ring.